Barry Sheck is one of the nation's best-known attorneys. He and his legal team at the Innocence Project work on many cases the public doesn't hear about until convictions are overturned. But it is the basis for a new series on WE TV. Before you left to go uh, search the Bronco at the print shed, the country was first introduced to attorney Barry Sheck in 1995. He was part of the powerhouse legal defense team representing O.J. Simpson in his murder trial. Sheck successfully challenged the way the DNA evidence at the crime scene was handled by the Los Angeles Police Department. That led to the football star's acquittal. It marked a monumental shift in how forensic technology would be used to solve crimes. This whole hearing took place. But the bulk of his life's work has been dedicated to the Innocence Project. It is an organization he created in 1992 with his partner Peter Newfield. They used DNA testing to exonerate the wrongfully convicted. In 2002, Sheck spoke with CBS News about his mission. We can screen these cases and effectively get them to the laboratories. And we not only prove that some people are wrongfully convicted, but these DNA tests will catch the people who really committed the crime, frankly, before they go out and commit more. Today, the Innocence Project and its network has freed 317 people, including 18 on death row. My name is Christine Rosa. I work for the Innocence Initiative. Now Sheck's real-life legal battles have inspired a television drama called The Divide. The series focuses on those who may be unfairly judged by the justice system. He was proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. His appeal for clemency denied. And now you're standing here telling me that the murderer's rights are more important than the victim's? No, that's not at all what I'm if saying. If that verdict had gone the other way, this city would have burned to the ground. Barry Sheck is here along with Tony Goldwyn, the executive producer and co-creator of The Divide. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you two had worked together before on the film called The Conviction? That's right, exactly, yeah. So how did this come about? Well, you know, I got to know Barry and the work that he and Peter Neufeld have done for years, the extraordinary work at the Innocence Project, and I realized that every single story that I heard was just so inherently dramatic and um, wanted to keep telling these stories. And television, you can take a novelistic approach to yeah. these themes that were exploring. So you're going to tell the story of Barry and Peter trying to uh, get people off death row and people who they believe are imprisoned unfairly? Well, The Divide focuses on a fictional, the conviction was a true story about one of Barry's cases. Right. And The Divide, we take, you know, create a fictional sort of composite of a situation in which a prosecutor might have gotten it wrong. But what's so interesting about this case, something you rarely see, the, victim, <clears throat> the victims are an affluent black family and the perpetrators are, are white. Mm -hmm. How did that come about, Barry? Because when I looked at that, I thought, <laughs> that is different. Well, it's very interesting. When Tony... Was that your idea? Well, it... it, it yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the, way, the way it turned out very interestingly <laughs> is that uh, the movie Conviction, which is really terrific, right. um, and based on that true life story of Betty Ann Waters, there's a Betty Ann Waters character here mm -hmm. in uh, yeah. the intern in the, uh, in the Innocence yes. Initiative. And uh, Tony had great insight into that. And Richard Legravenez, whose resume yeah, speaks yeah. for itself. I mean, everything about this. I mean, Yanis uh, 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 Kaminsky, the Academy Award winning cinematographer, the cast uh, all have come from Homeland, The Wire, uh, you know, all these great shows. Uh, it, it's just so well done. And, uh, but the idea was we sat around a table at the very beginning and Tony and Richard were saying, what about those Cheshire murder cases? Yeah, but that was my point to Tony in the beginning. My point was you're taking from the kinds of stories they had here. Exactly right. That's exactly right. But a lot right. of these ideas come right out of the Innocence Project. Right. But yeah, turning, and many turning are the, the Cheshire thing exactly. into a black family. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the right. Pettit murders. We said that's sort of a model in Barry. So it's, all, it's a great idea, but you need to flip the races. Mm -hmm. but you, you're, you know. What are you doing here? I mean, it really seems to be sort of a challenge to the system and how law enforcement works. I mean, what's sort of the broader concept you're trying to communicate? Well, really what Richard and I want to do, A, is tell a great story and make it very entertaining right. while shining a light on mm -hmm. themes that are really um, important. So we're do, we want to raise a lot of questions and make people think about it. This isn't a polemic to go look at the big bad system. Mm -hmm. It's saying look at the system, look at the way we look at judge. Look, before I made conviction, I assumed that pretty much if someone was in prison, they probably did it. Yeah. Um, getting to know the work that Barry does, uh, it raises a lot of questions and that's all we want to do and it's very provocative dramatically and makes really good television. Let me tell you, after I watched the, the opening, uh, the premiere episode, it was one of those things where I wish I had the rest. 
because I was ready to see now it's going to happen, now it's going to happen, mm -hmm. now it's going to happen. So you, you really started out, in my opinion, with a bang. But even the title, The Divide, because you're walking along all sorts of ethical minefields on every different level in this series. That's really what it's about. Yeah. You know, we take, you know, our, our, our institutions are really mirrors of ourselves yeah. and of our own psyches. You know, we, they are human institutions with human flaws. And, uh, you know, our justice system in the ideal form is pretty darn good, I think. Uh, you probably agree with me, but in practice, it's filled with gray areas and cracks just so we deal with institutional morality and then our own personal morality. Mary, as I said in that setup piece, I mean, we first began to know about you because of the O.J. Simpson trial. You have since then done a remarkable series of, of cases that have tested the judicial system. Was the fact that you have so put yourself into this so with such a commitment in any way connected to your sense of mission that came out of your participation in the O.J. Simpson trial? No, not at all, actually. Peter Neufeld and I, who you know, founded the, the Innocence Project and worked with all our uh, uh, colleagues in this Innocence Network across the country, we started this in 1992 before mm -hmm. uh, the O.J. Simpson case. Uh, our really uh, expertise at the beginning is that we knew a lot about DNA testing from trying to use it in the mm. first place mm -hmm. and that turns out to be the only really empirically validated uh, forensic assay. I mean right now we have a National Commission on Forensic Science and a National Academy of Sciences report in 2009 that's trying to change the whole way that we uh, uh, do forensic science in this country. And, you know, eyewitness mm -hmm. identification, videotaping of identification, all these reforms can change the system. So from the very beginning, we knew that this was a big deal and it could change the criminal mm -hmm. justice system. The Simpson case, uh, <laughs> you know, was in some ways a, a, an accident that we yeah. got involved in but it at all. Did the system work in the Simpson case? Oh, God, uh, no. Uh, I mean, the, the O.J. Simpson case uh, did not anything very good for the American criminal justice system. But the only silver lining, frankly, is that the work that uh, we did in terms of the forensic evidence, the prosecutors on the other side, and everybody agrees, was right, that it was mishandled, uh, mm -hmm. that we had to change it. Uh, so that part is uh, the only silver lining that we have, you know, national commissions on changing the way we deal with evidence. So no regrets in your involvement in the Simpson case? No, I mean, no. it's a mixed bag. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it destroyed it, television it, news. It, <laughs> yeah, it certainly, it certainly or or created it. Or created it, yeah. Exactly. Right. yeah. I mean, certainly. But what it is about this, I mean, you, you know there are innocent people that are there in prison, and you find them because of DNA evidence. And secondly, you know that people get off because of lawyering, and you just wonder what, how significant the numbers are that get off that shouldn't, as well as you remember how many get in who shouldn't be there. Well, the, 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 the real point is that uh, our reforms that the innocence movement is putting forward not only protect the innocent, but they enhance the capability of law enforcement getting the right person. So if you videotape interrogations, you have eyewitness reform, you clean up forensic science, you try to deal with the intractable problem of race, which in part yes. is really dealt with in a very interesting and creative way in this uh, movie, The right. Show exactly. the Divide, uh, you can begin to change the system. And I think we're making enormous progress. I think yeah. that there's a bipartisan uh, approach now uh, to changing the criminal justice system. When you hear Rand Paul and the American exactly. Civil Liberties Union talking about let's do something about mandatory yeah. minimums, mass incarceration, uh, the Attorney General uh, uh, and the President. So the system is changing? I think so. And all the questions um, are raised in the divide. Absolutely. All the questions are raised. July 16th, right? And that's very 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Exactly what I was going to say. It premieres <laughs> tomorrow night, the divide on WeTV. <laughs>